here we are doing this back muscles and we're going to divide the back into three specific layers the superficial back the deep back and the intermediate back. So all three of those, superficial, intermediate, and deep back, all have different muscles accordingly. And what you'll find is the superficial back has five muscles. All of them will go and try to accommodate those muscles uh, of moving uh, the axilla the, from the axillary skeleton to the appendicular skeleton. So what we're going to find is five muscles all together, two very prominent muscles. The first one is uh, what we call the trapezius. It's named according to its shape. It's quite trapezoid shape, and that's the trapezius. So trapezius, and then just inferior to that, you will find this muscle that kind of tucks itself underneath it. Uh, this is the latissimus dorsi, as in most lateral and on the dorsal side. So that's the latissimus dorsi. So trapezius and latissimus dorsi. If I were to cut trapezius away from its origin of the superior nuchal line, the external occipital protuberance, ligamentum nuncae down the C7 through T12 spinous processes and flip it over, you'd find these three muscles in a row lining up on the medial border of the scapula being the next three superficial back muscles. So this is the rhomboid major. You can see it's a rhombus, uh, kind of a tilted square. This guy right here, a little bit smaller, actually much smaller, the rhomboid minor. And then coming up from the superior angle of the scapula, that is the uh, levator scapulae. So elevates the scapula. So these five again of the superficial back, trapezius, latis trapezius, latissimus dorsi, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and then levator scapulae. All right, so those are the five superficial back muscles. We can see them also on this model. This one really only just has a trapezius uh, bits of the superior fibers of the trapezius here, and then the latissimus dorsi down here. As for the rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, levator, scapula, it doesn't have any. As you can see, it's just going to remove them. In comparison, we can actually see then some of the intermediate back muscles. We actually see one of the two muscles that you're responsible for. Underneath rhomboid would actually be the serratus posterior superior, but we don't see it because we can't remove it. And of course, looking at this model, it's completely gone. And so down here, we actually see the serratus posterior inferior. You'll notice that we switch it because they were intermediate back, moving away from axillary skeleton attaching to appendicular skeleton. We go from axillary skeleton attaching to axillary skeleton. These are accessory respiratory muscles, and that's why if all of a sudden you breathe really hard, like in an asthma attack or something, you, you get them sore. Uh, so you'll find them right here and right here, superior uh, serratus posterior inferior, serratus posterior superior underneath the rhomboid my major, but we don't actually see it. This one also then has some deep back muscles. Uh, as you notice, this one has no intermediate back muscles, but the deep back muscles, we're not going to delineate into the different layers of the deep back muscles. We're just going to point out some of the muscles that we have. And so when we talk about deep back muscles, let's take a look at the neck identifying these muscles. The first one is this guy right here coming across, going to the head. This is called the splenius capitis. So splenius capitis going up to the head, kind of going into the side, kind of forming a V, if you can imagine, so like it's a V. But then we switch it to going straight up and down uh, longitudinally. This underneath, directly underneath the splenius capitis, that would be the semispinalis capitis. So this is splenius capitis, capitis as in head, and then this is semi-spinalis capitis, as in half the length of the spine and goes to the head. Uh, we don't see the other muscles of the deep back muscles, and I'm not going to describe them at length here. There's plenty of them. But we're going to also take a look at these other, the, uh, the other one that we have, and that's down here. You'll find these two muscles, bellies, are what we term the erector spinae group. Now, down here really doesn't delineate between the three different ones that you're responsible for of iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. But you can see here... They are the erector spinae, they erect the spine. You don't really see them on this model, as you can see many of the things are stripped away, but you can see the last types of muscles called the rotators and a little bit, well, some people have contested that these are multifidus, but uh, either one. Uh, so I would just call these rotators. Those are our rotator muscles, which go from transverse process to spinous process. Uh, cut it across, and then multifidus tends to jump more than just one uh, spinous process or one vertebrae, and so we'll find these there. So there's plenty of other ones. Those are the ones you're responsible for uh, in our class, and so these are our rotators, and that's our back muscles. Let's kind of review and go right through all the muscles. So superficial back, here we go. This is trapezius. This is latiss latissimus dorsi, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, levator scapulae. Intermediate back muscles, this is inferior serratus, posterior, inferior. 
And then deep back muscles, this is the splenius capitis, semispinalis capitis, erector spinae group with its three delineations of iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis, and then over here are rotators.